Hello everyone and welcome to another ride overview. Today we're going to take a closer look at the inverted hairpin coaster or as I used to call it when I was younger, the Harpin coaster. Yes, not only did I read that wrong, I also pronounced it the French way for some reason. Anyway, the inverted hairpin coaster is a single car wild mouse coaster type and it is pretty much exactly the inverted version of the steel wild mouse. Being a wild mouse coaster has quite a few advantages. First off, it's very cheap to build. I like using the looping coaster to compare how expensive certain coaster types are as its cost is about average and a lot of people are familiar with it. The hairpin coaster is about 25% cheaper than the looping coaster, making it on the cheap side. It is the most expensive of the four wild mouse coaster types though. Another advantage is that the hairpin gets high excitement, intensity and nausea or EIN stats really easily. Here I have a hairpin coaster with 6.1 excitement, 7.7 .7 intensity and 4.5 nausea. If I now use cheats to change it to a looping coaster with the exact same length, g-forces etc, the EIN stats go down significantly to 4.6, 5.4 and 2.4. Not only does it get better stats for the same design, it also gets higher g-forces more easily thanks to the small level to steep pieces and tiny turns. This means that on top of the same design being cheaper to build, you also need a smaller design to get the same stats, making it even cheaper. I mentioned that the tiny turns are useful for getting high g-forces easily, but you do have to be careful with them. If you take them at a speed of 45 km per hour or lower, you will be fine, but any faster than that and you will get excessive lateral g-forces. As soon as you have more than 2.8 lateral G's, you will get a lot of extra intensity, which you don't want on the hairpin. For the small turns, which are the largest turns that the hairpin gets, the limit is 60 km per hour. Because the hairpin always has single cars, optimizing the throughput is a bit more involved than on many other coaster types. Firstly, you want to always build the entrance building on the first tile of the station so that you minimize the time that guests spend walking on the platform. Secondly, you want to set the minimum waiting time to zero in most situations. Because the hairpin has many cars instead of just one or two longer trains, the standard minimum waiting time of 10 seconds can really add up. Here is a fairly normal design with a 10 second minimum waiting time on the left and no minimum waiting time on the right. You don't even need numbers for guests per hour to see that the blue coaster has a lot more cars just doing nothing in the station at all times. If we do take a look at the numbers we can see that removing the minimum waiting time has roughly doubled the throughput. This is quite a massive improvement just by changing one variable, but you do need to be careful with it. If you have a very long inverted hairpin coaster, a full car can catch up to an empty car. This is because the car itself is quite light, so the guests increase the weight by quite a lot proportionately, and heavier cars lose speed less quickly. You do need a very long track for this and it's not nearly as extreme as on the mini suspended coaster as the empty car is considerably heavier but it can still happen. You can prevent this by increasing the minimum waiting time or setting it to wait for full load. In terms of special elements the hairpin only gets the station, brakes and block brakes but I'd argue that those aren't the real special elements. The real special elements are the tiny turns and to a lesser extent the small level to steep pieces. They allow you to construct much more compact designs than you would be able to otherwise. Those tiny turns can also be useful to meet one of its stat requirements. Speaking of stat requirements, the inverted hairpin has, along with the wooden wild mouse, the most of any coaster type with 6. It needs a drop of at least 6 meters, at least 3 drops, 
A top speed of at least 25 km per hour, a length of at least 170 meters, at least 0.1 negative g's and at least 1.5 lateral g's. For every stat requirement that your coaster fails to make, all its stats will get divided by 2. If you manage to somehow fail every single stat requirement, the stats will be divided by 2 to the power 6 or 64. This is actually quite useful if you want to get the lowest stats possible. A tiny circle like this only has 0.05 excitement and intensity and 0.04 nausea for a total combined EIN stats of 0.14. I'm not sure if it is possible to beat that, but do let me know if it is. The most cheap and compact design that barely meets all these stat requirements that I could come up with is this one. It's not quite as small as the smallest steel wild mouse design because it does have extra stat requirements, but it is still quite small. With more than 2000 guests per hour, it has close to the highest throughput possible on a single station hairpin, so it is a very efficient design. There is a weird bug that I discovered when designing this ride. Take a look at these two designs, they are identical except for the first drop. The red coaster has a small level to steep piece followed by a steep to gentle and gentle to level piece. The blue coaster on the other hand has it the other way around. Both drops have a height of 4 units or 6 meters which is exactly enough for the stat requirement yet the red coaster still gets a stat penalty. This is because for some reason the highest drop height on the red coaster is reported as only 5 meters. The blue coaster does report the drop as the correct 6 meters so it gets no stat penalty. This happens to any drop that starts with a small level to steep piece on any coaster type, so be aware of that. The next design is a bit more expensive, but also uses up even fewer tiles than the previous design at a measly 2 by 8 tiles. The higher cost does come with higher stats, so it's not wasted money. Because of the short station, it does have a lower throughput though. Then again, if you're spamming like 10 of these, they're unlikely to all be popular enough to constantly have guests coming in, so in that case the lower maximum throughput matters a lot less. Inverted hairpin spam isn't as effective as looping or corkscrew coaster spam though, as the hairpin only attracts 55 guests to the park. This is on the low end for roller coasters, but it's still a lot better than, unsurprisingly, the Hardline Twister Coaster, which only attracts 35 guests to the park. Up next is a design that shows what you can do when you go a bit bigger. For less than 3200 euros you can get more than 7 excitement and about 9.5 intensity. There aren't many coaster types that can get such high stats for such a low price, so I'd say this is where the inverted hairpin is at its best. Make it much bigger and you easily get over 10 intensity and make it much smaller and you don't fully make use of its cheapness. A design like this is also very useful in parks where guests prefer more intense rides, as on most other coaster types you have to spend a lot more money to get the intensity rating high enough. There is one good reason to go even bigger though, and that is when you need it to be 600 meters long, because harder guest generation is turned on. The wild mouse coaster types are not designed to be this long at all, so I came up with this. It's a combination of the cheapest and most compact design that is at least 600 meters long and has at least 6 excitement. You should only ever build this if you absolutely need to, but when that's the case it will do the job. And that's it for the inverted hairpin coaster. It's a good, compact coaster type that can get high stats for a low price. You can't really ever go wrong with building one of these, as long as you are careful with the lateral G's in the tiny turns. If you learned something new or found this video interesting, consider giving it a like or leave a comment. You can also subscribe or follow me on Twitch. 
Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.